Greetings, fellow Gorehounds, and welcome back to a Blood Splatter vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Dracula. And uh, happy Thanksgiving to all my American viewers that uh, are going to be celebrating Thanksgiving this weekend. We are going to talk about a movie that is Thanksgiving related, and that is the latest horror comedy uh, starring Bruce Campbell, Devin Sawa, and Michael J. White called Black Friday, which is, you know, exactly what it sounds like. It's a horror movie set on Black Friday. Uh, in this case, it's a zombie comedy, um, which zombie comedy is a one of those genres that is so like, it's so done at this point. Oh yeah, yeah. That you really got to make sure that you make yours entertaining. And I think this movie did a good job of making it entertaining. Well, they, they knew right off the bat, they're like, yeah, let's get some gimmick casting in here. Oh, Why yeah, the yeah. fuck not? Nah, let's get Bruce Campbell. You know, in like here. like you put Devin Sawa in there, you put Bruce Campbell in there, you put you put Michael J. White, three different yeah. figures with their own cult followings, and you get them to interact with one another. Already you got a whole bunch of people sold. Right. right? It's like it's like the only other guy they could have gotten made even better be like Danny Trejo's. Oh yeah, if they had yeah. like a Danny Trejo, like that'd be great, you yeah. know? Absolutely. He uh, could have been the truck driver. Oh, there you go. That would have mm -hmm. been cool. <laughs> Um, but but that being said, I do want to praise this movie because it does do some some interesting things, which with its zombie premise that not all zombie movies do. We'll talk more about them when we get to the spoiler section because most of that stuff comes in like the last act of the movie. Yeah, uh, when things get really interesting. Uh, but I will say this: uh, this is not like the best zombie comedy you've ever seen, no. but but it is definitely a a very serviceable one. It is it's, one. It's a solid offering. Exactly. You know? Like if you were to make like a scale of like, should I see this in theaters? This would be one that you would rent. Now it's not in theaters. It's just a rental. So yeah. that makes your job easier. You can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. On the level of restaurants, like this is like this is like a, this is like, this is Mel's Diner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. good and solid. Yeah, you know, yeah. it, not you're not going to be disappointed. Know what you're getting. Yeah. Few surprises, maybe. Absolutely. Maybe a little it's bit not, better. It's not expecting. the high end. Yeah, yeah, not the high end. But, but it's we, also not the low end. Yeah, yeah. Better than you were hoping for. Not gonna blow. You know, definitely. Definitely not a first date kind of movie. Like, Maybe that'd be a little lackluster. Like I was thinking of it earlier today when I was taking my shower and I was like, this is the kind of movie where back in like the 80s, 90s, you would have rented this because it had like a cool cover or something and some names that you recognize. Um, you'd go home, you'd watch it and you'd be expecting it would be some complete B-movie bullshit and that you get enjoyment out of it because it's so bad it's good. But then you'd be surprised that it's actually pretty good. But you also are very much aware of why it's not good enough to be like with the A tier. Yeah. Why yeah. no one's like super talking about it all the time. Yeah, yeah. Because you know? it's not a bad movie. It's just not exactly. a great movie. Exactly. You know? It kind of sits into that zone. And you know what? Sometimes you just feel like you want a movie like that. You don't need a movie that blows your mind. You know, you don't need the mayhems. No. You know, no. you don't need the movies that completely blow your mind. Sometimes you just need the movie that you can just sit down, watch, not think about too much, and enjoy the ride. Yeah, and yeah. This is this is definitely a like hang out with your friends and smoke mm -hmm. a bowl kind of movie. 100%. 100 percent um it, it's got some funny shit in it it's got uh some funny performances by especially by the the three we mentioned yeah uh, they do a pretty good job even though uh devin sawa plays more of a straight man compared to some of the other uh characters in this yeah he's still the, pretty funny at what times was the last thing we saw devin sawa in a chucky actually chucky that's right yeah he plays that's the, right the he plays the twin dad yeah the dad and the uncle. right and before that i saw him in a, in a movie called hunter hunter which i never did a vlog on uh, but he was pretty good in that movie too, which is a completely different movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, but speaking of Chucky, there is a Chucky cameo. There's a Chucky in this. cameo. In uh, this, not kinda. Yeah, yeah. It, it. There's a point in which they're scrolling through the channels, and one of the things they they land upon is the Chucky series. So there's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which you could tell was in there because it was like, hey, you're in that Chucky show, aren't you? Exactly. All right, let's put that shit in. Because uh, Devin Saw was one of the executive producers on this, so it's very obvious there was a bit of a tie-in happening there. And yeah. you know what? I'm here for it. Oh the no. It was fine. I mean, it's set in a toy store. It's exactly. A it's a horror comedy set in a toy store. If Chucky don't show up, it kind of be weird, actually. And speaking of it, there was some of the some of my favorite gags in this involve around the fact that this is set in a toy store. There's like this one toy line that is featured very prominently in the uh, movie called Yeah, just made up for the movie. Was it like Sour Dower Den Dennis? Dower Dennis. It's a clinically depressed teddy bear. <laughs> Um, but they're all malfunctioning, so they yeah. all sound even more depressed because it's like they're slowly breaking down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a teddy bear in like a fucking like white collar shirt and a tie. Yeah. It's like, 
I guess this is why my love wife left me. <laughs> like, some of the humor in the movie can be a little hit or miss. Like, it's nothing that's, like, groan-worthy. But, like, you're not going to laugh out loud the entire time. But every time Dower Dennis was on screen, I was laughing that my was ass good. off. That was good, yeah. <laughs> I was laughing my ass off. Oh, because you're like, you're like okay, this is going to be... Because they set it up. You're like, all right, this is going to be important somehow. Yeah, yeah. But you don't expect that there's going to be an entire scene where this bear just fucking unloads in this monologue yeah, yeah. about his shitty life. And its monologue is composed of ob obvious like sound clips. Also, he's voiced by Seth Green. So yeah. imagine Seth Green doing like his like uh uh like like a more a less a less goofy version of his voice on Family Guy that he does. Uh, where, where <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a little. Uh, what, what's that? What's that character's name? Um, God damn it! It's, uh, is it Chris? Chris. Chris. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's it's like Chris, but old, but an older Chris. Yeah. You know. Actually, funny story about Chris. All right, this is a complete tangent, but enjoyed for a ride. I was actually watching um, the Michael Rosenbaum podcast and he had oh, Seth yeah? Green on and Seth Green explained on the podcast where the Chris voice comes from. Oh, where did it come from? Yeah, the Chris voice is a result of him doing a, um, uh, uh, oh, God damn it. What's the name of the villain from Silence of the Lambs? Uh, Buffalo Bill? Yeah. Okay. It's him doing a Buffalo Bill impression, but imagining Buffalo Bill as a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's where the Chris voice comes from. And on the okay, podcast, okay. he even demonstrated doing Buffalo Bill and then like t pitching it down yeah, until yeah, Chris. pitching it up. Yeah, and then and also t also talked about how like in the earlier seasons he had a much deeper voice, uh, and then as the show went on, it became a much higher pitch voice. So it sounds less like Buffalo Bill these days, but in the early days, in the early days are really yeah, yeah. I can see that. I can see that. Oh anyway, God. complete tangent. But I love Seth Green and I love his stuff. But like he's really funny as as Dower Dennis, which is another nice little like a uh, uh, horror icon cameo there for all you fans of uh, Idle Hands. Seth Green has a cameo in this. You know? Oh, that's right. You know? Yeah, it does count. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also like how it's kind of, it, it, how in that scene where he goes, it goes on this, it basically plays all of its sound clips. Yeah. In this one scene where like <laughs> fucking uh, dude is like having his big moment. Oh, yeah. And it's basically his inner monologue. <laughs> okay, that's the thing I do want to say about this movie. Unlike a lot of these kind of uh, zombie horror comedies, uh, these kind of like B grade ones as opposed to the A grade ones, uh, this one actually has something to say. Um, it's very similar to the movie Slacks, if you've seen that one, where this is very much a movie about consumerism oh, yeah. and working dead end retail. And uh, what that does to your soul, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Because every character in this movie that works at this toy shop have all worked there at various, like some of them have been there for like 25 years. Some of them have been there for 10 years. Some of them have been there for five years and some of them it's just their first day. And you get to see the levels of which working at this place has killed their soul. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where some of the funniest shit in this movie comes from is, is them you know, dealing with that. And that's also where the movie is actually kind of saying something about like, you know, American consumerism and how it's eating us alive and yeah. how it's shitty on the retail workers who have to sell us this shit, you know? Yeah. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes the retail workers do hate you because they're pieces of shit. And how the customer is sometimes wrong. <laughs> Dead ass wrong. Customer's sometimes an asshole. And this movie also kind of feels like someone watched the opening of, um, uh, Krampus. Yeah. And it's like, let's make a oh, whole yeah. movie on that opening. But, oh, yeah. But, but actually make them zombies. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, it reminded me of that. It rem reminded me of Jingle All the Way. Yes, yeah. You know? Um, it also very much, with its commentary of zombies equals consumerists, harkens all the way back to Dawn of the Dead. Like, just bringing it back yeah. to its roots. <laughs> you know? Uh, so I kind of like that. Even though this is kind of like a B-grade zombie comedy, it still had something to say, and I appreciate that. Yeah, know? yeah, it was still decent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Should we get the spoilers? Sure, sure, All absolutely. Right. Um, I definitely recommend this movie. It is currently available on various streaming platforms to rent. Uh, none of the, It's not like on Shudder or Netflix or anything. You're going to have to rent it on like Amazon or Vudu or one of those platforms. But I highly recommend you do if you're just looking for something to have a good time this holiday season. Yeah, this movie, especially if you've ever worked retail. Yes, if you had to work retail, and had to like listen to the same fucking holiday songs on oh, repeat. God. This movie's gonna be cathartic for you. It's also gonna hurt you I, I because can't. it's gonna remind you of the pain. I can't listen to fucking 
Christmas wrapping, by the way. Oh, the God. Is. I can't. Oh, yeah. I've heard it too many fucking times. I've heard it more more times than that fucking Michael Jackson Christmas song. Yeah. You know, yeah. where I was just like, because I was just, I just sitting in a fucking chess king, which, if for those of you who don't know what a chess king is, you're blessed. <laughs> it was like a really, really shitty 80s style clothing store in the 90s. Oh, no. You know, like, oh, no. That was, that was bad. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, like, I'm sure there's like one last lone chess king out in the world somewhere. Like, kind of like how there's, kind of like how there's like still some, uh, some, uh, what are they called? EB toys out there. Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. KB toys. KB toys. Yeah. yeah KB there's, toys. They like, still exist in like be. some areas. But. Yeah. But for the most part, it's just like fucking God. Mm-hmm. Or like Toys R Us. Remember that shit? Oh, yeah. I remember Apparently, toys R Us. this film was filmed in an abandoned Babies R Us. Yeah. Which was what, why the location feels super authentic. Yep. Um, I will say this. I will say this. Jack actually did point out, like, before we get to the spoilers, that there are points in the movie where if you have worked retail, there are some obvious things the characters don't do that you feel like they should. Yeah. Um, but but it's one of those, like, for plot reasons, they don't. And you're just kind of sitting there going, like, yeah, but actually, like, you could escape through that route because all these big retail stores have yeah, that. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Otherwise, how do they get the shit in? You yeah. Yeah. Um, and, but as long as you can roll with that, the movie's still very fun, you know? It's, yeah. It's just, it's one of those, obviously, this was, this is a movie that could have used, like, maybe one more pass just for that stuff, but whatever. Whatever. It got its point across despite that. Yeah. It also has some really awesome practical effects. I forgot to stress that. Like, the zombie effects are all practical, and they're not zombies the way you normally see them. They actually yeah. do some really cool things with them. They're more like toxic waste looking zombies. With, yeah, yeah. With like bird faces. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so because so they would look like turkeys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they look like turkeys, exactly. <laughs> You know, and, and that way, the zombies kind of reminded me of like a higher end version of the effects from Poultrygeist. Yeah. They all have like yeah. the beaks growing out of their faces. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are points towards the end of the movie where I feel like you could see the limit of their budget with the effects, but we'll talk about that. Oh, yeah, spoilers. you can definitely see some of the scenes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I highly recommend this movie. Um, is there any dead animals? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't even think they kill a turkey in this. I don't think. No, I, I don't think. I think <laughs> yeah. you're right. I, I yeah. don't remember any animal in the movie whatsoever. No dead animals. So you're safe from that. Just enjoy the movie. Enjoy Bruce Campbell. Enjoy Michael J. White. And enjoy Devin Sawa. This movie is a fun time. And with that said, let's move on to the spoilers, finally. <laughs> Right, so zombies come from outer space. Yeah, yeah. This movie 100% opens with one of those, like, Night of the Creeps kind of openings. You have something falling from space. Yep. And then, like, someone goes to examine it, kind of like Slither or Night of the Creeps or any of those old movies. Uh, Killer Clowns was a movie I kept thinking of a lot. Yeah, definitely. This movie movie has a lot of killer clowns in it. Um, And and, and it turns out that they're from outer space and they're here for reasons. Um, That reason, as the movie goes on, you discover, as you see them constantly trying to build something in the middle of the store that looks like this giant like blob thing yeah that just keeps like they keep throwing bodies on it and throwing themselves on it and it keeps morphing into a giant blob and you're wondering where this is leading and where it's leading to is essentially the uh you know how at the end of um dead alive you have the giant mom yeah. who shows up you get a version of that in this movie yeah where, like <laughs> all the all the fucking black friday fucking customers a version of this giant turkey mutant yeah it's a gigantic turkey mutant which is obviously just a guy on like a green screen that they oh, yeah, in, yeah. In, in all the makeup with all the makeup on uh just kind of superimposed while everyone else is running below like it's like it looks, it looks like a godzilla type effect yeah um uh, this is where i feel like the effect kind of shows most of its seams because oh yeah yeah like yeah. It, it like looks a little wonky but you know what the movie is so goofy at that point it feels like it's tonally it, it fits yeah yeah it doesn't break the tone exactly no. yeah you know, it's supposed to be kind of goofy. It's kind of like seeing the giant Deadly Spawn at the end of Deadly Spawn. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's supposed to look definitely. pokey and goofy. That's the yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. If it didn't, it would be wrong, Exactly. You know? Like, like, the only problem that I had is this movie does suffer from we escaped somehow. Yeah, that happens a couple um, times. Which, which, near the end of it, you're like, how did they defeat that monster? I mean, I know what it was supposed to be but that didn't look like it was gonna yeah. work and it, i yeah. don't understand how it could work that happens a couple you times know, i was expecting they were gonna be like allergic to cranberry sauce or something and also you if know you, like if you've ever worked one of these because this isn't set in a mall 
Yeah, this is a standalone like Toys R Us. Yeah, store. yeah, one of those ones with its big parking lots and its big back lot and. Uh, and if you've ever worked at one of those, you know that they have these big sections in the very back where everything is stored and where the trucks pull up and drop their stuff off. Yeah. And in this movie, they try to pass it off like there's only one way in and out from the back. And it's this one little entrance that the uh, truck just perfectly, it's just perfectly rammed into. into. I'm like, no. I'm like, no, usually first off, there's not just one of those truck ramps usually. Yeah, there's usually a couple of them. Second off, usually there's other ways to go around that's not just that ramp. Yeah. So, And that, that's the thing you have to kind of suspend your disbelief at this point in the movie. Yeah, you know? because at Christmas time, one truck arrives. Yeah. On Black Friday. Yeah. Bullshit. Yeah, exactly. You know? No, it's going to be, they're going to be coming and going all fucking yeah. night. Um, but I will say, I did love how much of a throwback movie this movie felt like. It definitely felt like a lot of the movies we mentioned before. Like, it felt like it was going for Night of the Creeps, going for uh, Killer Clowns especially. Killer yeah. Clowns feels like like the thing that they were mainly taking from because like a lot of this way the zombies acts is very goofy kind of like yeah. color clowns and, yeah. and the big like a uh, mutation pod yeah at like the very the end cotton candy thing yeah from, exactly from it clowns. very much looks very reminiscent of that um and i appreciated that because i'm a big fan of those kind of like 1980s movies that are throwing back to 1950s movies but with way better effects yeah i'm a big fan of those kinds of movies and so seeing kind of a modern version of that movie Pretty good for me. I enjoyed that. Yeah, it definitely is. It, it, it's definitely, you could definitely tell that it's got a lot of 90s sarcasm. Yes. You know, like well, it's very sarcastic. Movie. All the leads, like like the kind of lead characters we're following, like the Devin Sawa character is totally a Gen Xer. Yeah. You know, he's a, he's a Gen Xer who never really went anywhere with life and just kind of got yeah, stuck at this retail just hole. stalled out. Exactly. You know? uh, 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 Bruce, Bruce Campbell, kind of a boomer. Yeah, you know, but but because Devin Sawa is technically our main protagonist, he's kind of like our final guy. Yeah, he's our Ash for the story. Yeah, um, uh, it's very much a Gen X perspective in the movie. Yes, you know, so very sarcastic and and very much fuck retail, fuck consumerism, you know, all that stuff. And I I thought that was a breath of fresh air. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed yeah. it. Well, also like they also found like some of the nastiest looking people to be the customer. Oh man, yeah, you know, before they even get the zombie makeup, it's just like. Everyone who's picked is just like, you know, what's the meanest looking face you can do? Exactly. You know. And most of them look like they've already zombied before they even get in there. And that, that, that very much felt like a Shaun of the Dead kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Where, where you're sitting there watching the crowd going like, is that guy a zombie or does he just look that shitty? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like everyone's complaining about having, you know, getting the latest thing or $5 off on yep. that. But they don't have the latest thing because it's malfunctioning, even though they have a bunch in the back, but they're all broken. Yeah, they're all broken. <laughs> they're like fire hazards. Oh no, they're flammable. I wonder where that goes. Um, <laughs> it's also a movie where every character, it's an ensemble cast, so every character kind of has their thing. Like you have Michael J. White, who's who's the repairman. He's the guy who yeah. goes around repairing things that are broken within the building. And so therefore, he's the badass that has all the tools to fight the zombies. So like, he'll use a nail gun and he'll fucking hit them with a hammer and shit and screwdrivers in the face. Yeah. It's pretty fucking badass. Uh, Bruce Campbell is the manager. He is obsessed with managing and he's a coward, you know? Yeah. Because he represents everything bad with consumerism. That's yeah. just what he is, you know? He's he's the evil leech that is leeching off of everyone. Um, and you have uh, Devin Sawa, who's the, uh, uh, the, the, the Gen Xer who uh, never really kind of grew up. Um, and to be honest, like, like, like even if he did, people just keep shitting on him so what's the point yeah yeah <laughs> um you have uh the the young kid who's very much uh uh the kind of zoomer character and he's a he's a hypochondriac um so like he's constantly like like the fact that it's black friday and he has to deal with customers and and people are throwing up in aisles and everyone's a zombie there's a lot of humor garnered from the fact that he he, he needs to wash his hands all the time and it's, yeah uh you have you have uh you have the the millennial girl Who's uh who's a little bit older than the Zoomer kid, uh who is dating uh not well sleeping with yeah sleeping, sleeping with, with the, the Gen guy, Xer yeah. guy, um but it's very obvious that she's kind of down that same path and he kind of represents that path and she's kind of torn between it yeah know? yeah because it ain't great <laughs> it ain't great you know? no, um and, and you have you have uh uh the. The fat, I think he was supposed to be gay. Was he supposed to be gay or was he just effeminate? I, 
Yeah, he was coded gay. He was coded gay. Yeah, yeah. he was coded gay. Who's kind of yeah. like the secondary manager? He's he's the guy that sucks up to the manager yeah. and, and and has to boss everyone around. You know, around. just just a little too into the fact that he works for this toy store. And, and you're like, dude, he very shit. much acts like a mean girl, but he's a guy. Yeah, you know. And that character is very entertaining. He's one of those characters you kind of love to hate because he's just well, yeah, he's the little <laughs> he's the little Hitler of the yeah, movie. Yeah, you know, like you just really love to hate him. Uh, and then there are various other characters that matter and some don't and some just are there to be part of the body count. You know? Yeah, it, his character actually reminded me a lot of the character from uh, Little Monsters mm. mm-hmm. that was played by uh, the guy who did the voice of uh, Olaf. From, yeah, I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. Who that guy also, um, uh, fuck, what's his goddamn name? I, I know it off the top of to my head. Josh tongue. Trank? Or, no, it's no, not Josh no. Trank. That, it's, that was a director. Got it. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll put his name right here. That we'll, we'll do it that way. But he often will play characters that kind of sit in that weird zone of like, is that character supposed to be gay or am I just reading into his effeminateness? Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it makes you ask questions. <laughs> Uh, but I really like it. My favorite parts of the movie, though, are like stuff where like Bruce Campbell having his weird monologues, which are obviously like the parts where like the the voice of the author is using Bruce Campbell to make the opposite of the point of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce Campbell is always saying what the opposite of the point is. Yeah. I <laughs> took this job because it allows me to look down on all the people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This store is a wonderful place where the magic happens. happens. You know, the just... magic happens. Every Christmas, some guy comes here to have their dreams crushed in there. <laughs> <laughs> and then ultimately culminating in him eventually kind of giving the ultimate monologue of the movie where he kind of re- reveals that he's dead inside and that this job has killed him over these years and, and he sacrifices himself to save yeah. everyone else. <laughs> but he does it in a way that's utterly pointless, which is just so fitting to his character. Yeah. Because <laughs> it doesn't actually help anything. It's just a pointless sacrifice. It's kind of like it's kind of like if that scene where Sam Jackson got killed in... in a. Uh, uh, Deep Blue Sea. Uh, Deep Blue Sea. Yeah. But it was but it was like building up to the death as opposed to like a sudden death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's building up to the point where he like fucking, you know, charges the zombie yeah. or but in this it's for no reason. It's for no reason. They didn't need him to do that. Yeah. It didn't actually help anything. In fact, it might have made things worse because now there's less people to do shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh but you kinda like it because it's Bruce Campbell doing the Bruce Campbell thing where he's playing a very confident idiot, and he's really good at that. Yo, oh, yeah. I will say this: I do wish this movie had more Michael J. White. He's one of the. I agree. He 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 leaves the movie too. Yeah, soon. he leaves the movie like in the first third, I think. Maybe the first half. Maybe he, he was there a little longer than I realized because it is a short movie. Uh, but it feels like he's there for only like the first third or so. And... Yeah, it feels like he's only there for like thirty minutes. You know. And when he goes, you do definitely miss him for the rest of the movie. You know. Yeah. Like you feel bad because it's it's a case where his death is definitely impactful because it's the first time you care when a character dies. Yeah, it's the first character you give a shit about. Exactly. You know? But it's also that moment where, like, yeah, but he was also the character I cared about the most at this point. So well, yeah, you want like <laughs> how to put it? Like, I was kind of hoping that he would. He goes out like a badass. But oh I'm yeah, he does. I'm hoping you would get a Fred Williamson and Dust Till Dawn moment. Yeah, where there's just the equivalent of him going. And before I knew it, I killed the entire Viet Cong platoon with ballpoint pen. I thought it was building up to that for the simple reason that he gave indications from the way he talked and some of the things he said that he was ex-military. Yeah, you know, like he used language when he was pointing people around that sounded like a military officer. So I was like, Yeah, yeah, I thought I thought that was gonna be like, like he was gonna. It have felt a like speech. it was. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. It felt like he was. That's supposed to be that kind of character that he was gonna have a flashback sequence yeah. or something, you know? Like, I, I, that, that, that's it's a minor complaint, but it's definitely a complaint. I would have liked way more Michael J. White. Yeah. Um, thankfully, you get a lot of Bruce Campbell and you get a lot of Devin Sawa, so you deal with them. But Michael J. White, I, I, I feel like he could have stayed in the movie at least another ten or so minutes, at least just. Oh yeah, you know. definitely. That's just my feeling. Um, well, I mean, he was Black Dynamite. I know. You know? Exactly. <laughs> And every time he fucking kicked the shit out of the va- zombies, it was like, fuck yeah, Black like Dynamite. Dynamite. You kick his ass. <laughs> you kick his ass. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, this movie's a lot of fun. It's got flaws. It's not the greatest movie ever made, but it is a very enjoyable movie. Um, it, 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 it says, it's exactly what it is, is on the, says on the tin, you know? Yeah. It's, it's these three character actors in a zombie comedy set on Black Friday that's commenting on consumerism. And it does that. Done, yeah. It does that. 
you know, bam, you got a movie. Uh, any any final thoughts on no, that? No, no, that's pretty much the movie. There, it's not not too complicated, not too long. Doesn't overstay its welcome. Mm. You know, nice and punchy. You know, not gonna change your life, but you're not gonna necess- you're not gonna need your time back either. You'd be like, yeah, that was a solid ninety minutes. That was solid. It, it's definitely under- entertainment. If you need some catharsis after dealing with your family this Thanksgiving, then throw this movie on, and grab grab a beer or something, and just enjoy yourself. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And if you ever work retail. Watch this mm-hmm. movie with a bunch of friends and know that you're not alone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they, the people who made this movie, oh, they feel you. They feel yeah. you. <laughs> I had a, I yeah, I had a friend who was a, a manager, and so he worked by Fridays. It was just oh, no. you know, it was just one of those like in order to get him to the to the fucking Thanksgiving dinner, I had to like pick him up oh, from man. like wherever he was at sometimes, mm-hmm. and. Man, he like, yeah, so basically, hey, Mike, how you doing? Um, <laughs> like, fucking, like, I remember he used to work at, like, remember the Warner Brothers stores? Oh, I remember He those, worked at yeah. one of those. I remember those, There was a period of yeah. time we worked at one of those, and it was just, here's what makes that interesting. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So, it's got all the problems of, like, a regular store, but some of these, like, <clears throat> niche stores, like your, your Warner Brothers store, your Disney stores, have an additional problem. Yeah. Which is sometimes the customer is crazy in a very specific way. As in they believe shit is real. Oh. And now you've got a problem. Oh no. Like oh, you've no. got a problem because the guy in the Scooby-Doo outfit just wants to go home and doesn't want to have to dodge attention. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I- Matthew Lillard just wants to say hi, sign a few autographs and, and go home oh. because that's what he was paid for. Please don't talk to him as if he is shaggy if you are over the age of seven. Please. You know, if you're we if you're a you. little kid, that's fine. But if you are a grown ass adult, you knock that shit off. It's creepy. It's creepy and weird. <laughs> you know? And then all of a sudden, and then one day you're watching Hellboy and you turn around and there they are. That creepy customer from the Border Brothers fucking store, and they're looking at you like they recognize you. And you're like, oh shit. It's seen me. I gotta run. <laughs> True story, by the way. Oh no! Like this one woman thought like Scooby Doo was real, and she was when I was picking dude up, and then she would just talk to me about Scooby Doo, and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna hide behind this Batman display, and uh, disappear. I'm gonna crawl on all fours and pop up over there because fuck this and then being like well glad i'm never gonna see that person again five years later hey that movie was good (laughs) Ah! oh jeez oh jeez oh bad bad that is horrifying it was dude retail trauma is real my friends oh my god it's real like 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 i didn't even work at the fucking store oh I didn't work in the store. You got I was second hand trauma. I got from secondhand this one. trauma from that shit. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. That's when you know it's bad. Oh, whoa. <laughs> yeah. It's and and and, and I can't I, I I've never known anyone who worked at a Disney store, but I'm sure. Oh, I imagine that's ten I'm times sure. Worse. I imagine it's way worse. I imagine it's ten times worse. I'm sure the kids are great, but all like 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 the grown adults that are a little too delusionally attached to Disney. Yeah, that that's will get your wild. problem. Because if you're getting that at a, at a Warner Brothers store, uh, imagine at Disney. Yeah, store. imagine at a Disney. Shop. Jesus. Oh God. Well, on that note. <laughs> Where can they find you, Count Jacula? Oh, you can find me at Secondhand Retail Trauma, um, <laughs> where I stream twice a week on Twitch TV at Thursdays and Sundays at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Hope to see you there. I also have a Twitter, which is Counting Jack, and I have an Instagram, which is Satanic Jacula. <clears throat> and if you want to interact with me, I... I'm dead inside. How are you? <laughs> Y'all know me, I'm the Horror Guru. You can find me at the Horror Guru on Twitch, on Twitter, on Instagram, and Facebook. Just look up the Horror Guru or Blood Spider Cinema, and I'll be there. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And if you'd like to help out either of us more directly, then be sure to check out our Patreon pages. And remember, if you decide to go the Patreon route, then even a dollar a month can go a long way. And if you made it this far into the vlog, then I want you to comment below, and be sure to comment below with the hashtag retail trauma 
hashtag retail trauma. Uh, feel free to even give us your own retail trauma stories if you want oh, in please. the comment section. Please. But even if you haven't, use the hashtag retail trauma so that I know you watch this vlog all the way through. And with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, it's uh, Thanksgiving weekend, so we're just going to record one more vlog. Uh, people aren't going to be watching YouTube videos this weekend anyway, so the vlog is mainly going to be, the next, second vlog is going to be for next week when I put it up on Monday or whatever. Uh, but we're going to try to get this vlog up on Friday, this one right here. Um, because bl releasing Black Friday on Black Friday just makes sense. It just makes sense. <laughs> and with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, peace out, and I'll catch you all later. I suppose that's when my life, wife decided to leave me after that. I, you know, I'm just, yeah, I'm glad somebody's listening. I guess, I guess you can. How about another drink? Dower Dennis, <laughs> Dower Dennis rules. I felt like, I felt like someone had fucking found my spirit animal. Like, yeah. finally, like, it <laughs> it's finally like your happened. Inner monologue. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I guess this is all my life has come to. Ah!